Hey everyone, this lesson is on thrombocytosis or condition of having too many platelets. So in this lesson we're talking about an approach to determining the cause of thrombocytosis. We're also gonna talk about signs and symptoms and we're also gonna talk about how we can treat it. So before we get into thrombocytosis, what is a platelet? A platelet is a cell fragment. And if we look at a blood smear here, we can see little platelets. And they are important because we need them for primary homeostasis to form a platelet plug. If you wanna learn more about this, please check out my lesson on that topic. And what are they fragments of? If they're a cell fragment, where do they come from? Well, they actually are cell fragments of a larger cell called the megakaryocyte, which are located in the bone marrow. And megakaryocytes have little receptors, and these receptors respond to thrombopoietin, or TPO. So thrombopoietin, or TPO, binds to these receptors on megakaryocytes, inducing the megakaryocyte to produce platelets. So that's how platelets are formed. So on average, we have approximately 150 to 400 times 10 to the 9th platelets per liter of blood. And the average lifespan of a platelet is approximately 8 to 9 days. So when we get into looking at platelets, we look at how many platelets we have. And if we have less than 150 times 10 to the 9th per liter, we have a condition known as thrombocytopenia, having too little platelets. And... Looking into the cause of thrombocytopenia, we think about decreased production, increased destruction, sequestration, hemodilution. If you want to learn more about that, please check out my lesson on thrombocytopenia. But this lesson is on having too many platelets. So having more than 400 times 10 to the 9th platelets per liter of blood is the diagnosis of thrombocytosis. We have too many platelets. What are some of the causes of thrombocytosis? There are quite a few. So if we think about it, we have thrombocytosis, again, greater than 400 times 10 to the 9th platelets per liter of blood and a blood smear here showing way more platelets than we had in the previous blood smear we showed. So we can break it down into two main categories of causes. There's primary causes. Primary causes are essentially bone marrow disorders. So these are where there's something wrong with perhaps the thrombopoietin receptor where it's chronically activated and the bone marrow is essentially producing way too many platelets than it should. And a lot of times, these are conditions like essential thrombocytosis, polycythemia vera, some cancers like chronic myeloid leukemia, and primary myelofibrosis. The other main category of causes is secondary causes. These are where most of the causes of thrombocytosis reside. And we call this reactive. So whereas in primary there was essentially a bone marrow disorder producing platelets on their own. But in secondary causes, the platelets are being produced in response or reacting to some other cause or something else. We can break this down further into acute causes and chronic causes of secondary thrombocytosis. Acute causes include acute blood loss, rebound thrombocytosis. So there's some issue with perhaps there was bone marrow suppression due to an infection or inflammation, and then you remove that infection inflammation, you can have a rebound in platelets being produced. Another cause is acute infection and inflammation. So early on in an infection or inflammation, we may have a increase in platelet count because platelets are often an acute phase reactant. And another cause of acute secondary thrombocytosis is actually alcohol cessation. So when an individual has prolonged and heavy alcohol use and they stop, they can actually have what we call this secondary thrombocytosis due to alcohol cessation. This is kind of like a rebound thrombocytosis itself. So they can get very high levels of platelets. And the other category of causes within secondary thrombocytosis is the chronic causes. And these can include iron deficiency. So having iron deficiency can lead to an iron deficiency anemia, but also a thrombocytosis. Another cause of chronic secondary thrombocytosis is hemolytic anemia. And another big cause that you're going to see is asplenia being a cause of secondary thrombocytosis. So asplenia is essentially having no spleen. So it can be due to the spleen being damaged due to some reason, hyposplenism or asplenism, or it could just be due to splenectomy, having the spleen removed for some reason. And all of these are caused because a lot of times the spleen can hold platelets inside of it or it helps degrade platelets. So both of these reasons, having no spleen, is going to lead you to having increased platelet counts. Malignancy is also another reason for secondary thrombocytosis and having inflammatory bowel disease. So a chronic 
Inflammatory bowel disease can lead to a chronic secondary thrombocytosis, again, because of that inflammatory response. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of thrombocytosis? So one of the big ones is if you have way too many platelets, you're gonna clot more than you should. So if you have way too many platelets floating around, you're gonna have an increased risk of clotting. So it can lead to strokes and infarctions like a heart attack or myocardial infarction. And paradoxically, bleeding can also be a risk of thrombocytosis. And you might be wondering, how is this possible? If you have so many platelets floating around, why are you having bleeding? Well, it's actually a very rare complication of thrombocytosis, but a lot of times it's due to defective platelets. So you might have a lot of platelets floating around, but they're just, something's wrong with them. They're not working properly, and this can actually lead to bleeding. Splenomegaly and early satiety can also be signs and symptoms of thrombocytosis. And as we mentioned before, it's because the spleen can hold platelets and it can break down platelets. So the spleen essentially gets enlarged because there's so many platelets, the spleen essentially has to get bigger and bigger to deal with all those platelets. So those are some of the more obvious signs and symptoms of thrombocytosis, but what are some of the other symptoms we might not think about? Some of these include headaches, visual disturbances, presyncope, so patients with high levels of platelets can have lightheadedness. They can also have what we call erythromyalgia. And erythromyalgia is essentially a peripheral vascular pain disorder where vessels become blocked, and in this case, vessels become blocked because there's just so many platelets, and the extremities become inflamed and hyperemic. And hyperemic is essentially where they become extremely swollen and red. So you can see here in this image, you can see this arm is more swollen and more erythematous than this arm. And this is erythromyalgia. Another sign of thrombocytosis is levetoreticularis. And levetoreticularis is a skin finding where we see a web-like pattern of vessels on the skin. And another symptom that patients with thrombocytosis can often complain about is puritis or excessive itching. And we often call this aquagenic. It is induced by water. So if you get water in your skin, especially warm water, so you can see this with patients after they've taken a bath, they come out and they're very, very itchy. And we can see this with thrombocytosis. We can see this with polycythemia vera as well. So important and interesting symptom to see. And with regards to lab work and lab values, something that we do see with thrombocytosis is hyperkalemia or an increased potassium level in the blood. And we call this spurious hyperkalemia. It's not a true hyperkalemia in the sense that there's so much potassium in the blood as much as it is there's so many platelets in the blood that it's interfering with our measurements of potassium. So how do we treat thrombocytosis? We have to break it down again into primary and secondary thrombocytosis because as we've seen, there's so many causes that are causing thrombocytosis that we have to be a bit more specific. So thrombocytosis primary causes, uh, generally we treat it with acetylsalicylic acid or ASA or aspirin, which is an antiplatelet. We can also use anagrilide, which is also an antiplatelet, so we can use that as well. And in some cases we can use hydroxyurea, where most of the time we use it in severe primary thrombocytosis. With regards to secondary thrombocytosis, we want to identify and treat the underlying cause. So remember that slide when I talked about all those causes of secondary thrombocytosis? Well, we wanna narrow it down. We want to find out what is the cause of the thrombocytosis. We wanna identify that and treat that cause. So a lot of times you can get this on history. So you might be able to essentially determine, oh, maybe they've got inflammatory bowel disease or they've got some other issue. You can also determine it through laboratory investigation. So if they have iron deficiency anemia, you can check their iron and you can check ferritin levels and you can see that and see, oh, they've got iron deficiency. This is what's causing the secondary thrombocytosis. So again, a lot of times we can determine the cause of secondary thrombocytosis by history. Maybe they've just recently quit alcohol or they've got some other symptoms. And we can also determine it through laboratory investigations. We can look for hemolytic panels to see if there's any hemolytic anemia, look for iron deficiency anemia as well, because again, that can be an often common cause of secondary thrombocytosis. So look for things on the history, look for things on in laboratory investigations as well. So again, with treatment, we wanna break it down into primary and secondary thrombocytosis. And then with pro primary thrombocytosis, a lot of times it's very similar. ASA, anaglide, and hydroxyurea in severe cases, whereas in secondary thrombocytosis, identify and treat the underlying cause. 
So if you want to learn more about other hematological conditions, please check out my hematology playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.